This is Sean Liu narrating stereotactic laser ablation of the amygdala and hippocampus using Alexel stereotactic frame and the visualized system. Patient's a 45 year old female with refractory left temporal lobe epilepsy. Her imaging demonstrated uh, loss of definition in the left hippocampus uh, with a little bit of subtle enlargement, suspicious for a malformation of cortical development. She was offered both conventional open surgery as well as stereotactic laser ablation, and she chose the latter. Principles of surgical planning involves creating a trajectory that longitudinally passes through the hippocampus and the amygdala. The anticipated diameter of the ultimate ablation is about 1.8 centimeters using the 10 millimeter diffuser tip. This allows creation of a cylindrical lesion created by backing the cannula out sequentially and creating uh, sequential burns along the length of the trajectory. The trajectory needs to be planned to avoid vascular structures, the ventricle and the choroid plexus. This is the probe's eye view showing the trajectory on a post-contrast T1 MRI. And you can see the vascular structures that need to be avoided as well as the ventricle and the choroid. For this particular case we were unable to get the trajectory as medial and superior as we would have liked to create a more complete ablation as we were limited by the vascular structures. So the patient starts in the operating room and is put to sleep with general anesthesia and the Lexel head frame and fiducial box are applied. The patient is then transported to CT for the registration scan. After returning from the operating room, the patient is placed in a supine position with the head flexed using cross table fluoroscopy and gun sights through the Lexel frame for verification purposes. Following application of the arc, a 3.2 millimeter uh, drill bit is used to create the opening in the calvarium using the frame's stereotactic guidance. The alignment rod is placed through the frame bushing. Here you can see the verification that it is on target. The anchor bolt is then threaded over the alignment rod and the anchor bolt is essentially maintains the trajectory uh, from this point on. The cooling cannula is then placed through the anchor bolt and the inner stylet is removed and replaced with the diffuser tip. The patient is then transported to MRI with great care taken to avoid displacing the anchor bolt and laser fiber. The place, patient is placed in the MRI coil due to the relatively posterior entry point. Uh, great care needs to be taken to prevent kinking of the cannula, displacement or pressure on the anchor bolt, and the structures of the uh, head and neck need to be properly padded to avoid injury. Initial scans are taken to demonstrate uh, and to confirm adequate positioning of the laser fiber. Scan planes are then obtained in a sagittal and axial view. The optical fiber is connected to the power source 
and irrigation is attached and flow is confirmed through the cannula. Temperature monitor points are then chosen. High points are used near the diffuser tip to ensure that uh, the temperature does not exceed 90 degrees Celsius at the tip. Safety points are then chosen on critical nearby structures. We typically will place safety points at the brainstem and thalamus, depending on where along the ablation we are creating a lesion. Initially the laser is turned on at low power, uh, typically four to five watts. This allows us to localize where the energy is being diffused. Following confirmation of this, the power is increased in the 9 to 10 watt range. The Visual Ace software allows for prediction of the ultimate uh, damage zone and this can be seen on this sequence in the middle smaller panel in orange. The time of the lesions are typically two to three minutes after which we would usually fail to see any additional damage uh, created. The cannula is then backed out uh, roughly eight millimeters and the next lesion is created along the trajectory of the cannula. Here you can see after uh, the final ablation is done with three ablations uh, total along the length of the cannula. You can see the final laser time for that last ablation was uh, three and a half minutes. And on the big panel, you can see in orange the ultimate prediction of the damage zone. Following the ablation, uh, post contrast uh, sequences are obtained that will demonstrate the area of injury uh, as a region of ring enhancement around the cannula. You can see in both the axial and coronal planes that ideally the area of ablation uh, would have been somewhat more superior and medial. But again, uh, this case was limited by the vascular anatomy. Following uh, these scans, the patient is taken out of the scanner, the anchor bolt is removed, a single stitch is used to close the stab incision, and the patient is extubated within the MRI suite and transported to recovery.